Going to shut up. I'm going to introduce Patrick Laverty, who's coming on to give his talk on InfoSec on the Cheap. So he's, uh, he works at Brown. He builds web apps. He breaks them. Okay, how do I become a Paul.com intern? And fixes them. Uh, you can become a Paul.com intern by writing PSW at Paul.com.com. And how many open spots do we have now? Uh, right now, uh, to answer your question, uh, Paul Asadori is asking how many open slots do we have? How many do we have, Paul? Zero. We have zero <laughs> slots right now. <laughs> but having said that, a little while ago I did mention that Joe McRae is, in, or is looking for interns. Uh, but come to us first because we were going to steal you from Joe. That's it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Patrick, he's an intern at Paul.com and is also the founder of the OWASP Rhode Island chapter. So, here's Patrick. Are you going straight into it? Yeah. Okay. Can I stay up here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, sure. You like it? You can still have the microphone. So you're snoring over there with the curse. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that sometimes when you go to concerts and all that, you go there to see some band, but there's other bands or acts before that, and the, those are the opening acts. You're all you're usually the one that you're there to see is the last one. I'm the last one of the day, so I want to thank everybody else for being my opening act today. <laughs> Anyway, so I think that's my extent of jokes for the day. Uh, learning security on the cheap. Uh, first, a disclaimer here. We're not here to talk negatively about any, anybody. If you do have a budget to do some of the big money things, do it because they're all well worthwhile. They're awesome. They're great. Uh, but a lot of times you don't. Sometimes you work in a place that doesn't want to have any kind of training budget. A lot of times that's the first thing to get cut. So how do you learn things when that's the case? What do you do when there's not much of a budget available? Do you just kind of throw your hands up, give up, and quit? Uh, well, usually the way that you can kind of do this kind of thing, when you want to learn something new, it, a lot of the typical way that you do it is you take classes. At least that's the first thought I had when I wanted to learn about this thing. Where am I going to take classes? So obviously, a local university. So some local university, if we know any that are around here or anywhere, uh, can cost almost $3,500 per course. Or there's some national training organizations that can cost more than $4,000. Or national conference training that costs more, more than $4,000. And those are for five days in one topic. And chances are you're going to need to learn about multiple topics. So now we start multiplying those costs. It gets crazy really quick. And again, if there's no budget, what happens? How do you start feeling, especially if you're just starting out? And it's not like you can lay this out, out of your own pocket. So how do you feel then? Frustrated. <laughs> okay. Now it's like, how do I do this kind of thing? So what are the alternatives to learning, or even staying current on security, uh, if you're already up on it? Social media. Mike was talking about how uh, you can't just surf the web to learn everything about security. That's completely true. Uh, you can't only learn just by Googling things. It's a great way to learn a lot of things, but it's not going to be the only way. Uh, and this is going to be, I'll, I'll tell you different medium or media or things that are available that you can kind of use them with. All right, so the first one, Twitter. Mike already said that if you're in InfoSec and you're not on Twitter, why not? Okay. But a lot of people will say, I have nothing to say. That doesn't matter. That's not the point. The point is for you to read. Start subscribing to, to various people. Uh, here are some of the different things that you might find on Twitter. These are just a couple that came through. They're, one of the things that I love about it is people will post links to research they've done uh, or different vulnerabilities that might pop up one day. Uh, I saw another one, I think just recently, uh, Mike kept talking about Jeremiah Grossman and I saw one where there was, somebody was talking about a brand new vulnerability that popped up and even he was like, what is this? And there's a link to it and it explained it all and it was all great. So Twitter is one great way uh, to find those things, and it's all in real time, it's all really fast to be able to find this kind of thing. Suggestions on who to follow, well, there you go. There, there's a very small part of the list that I have. 
the, one of the best things to do with your, uh, to, to start figuring out who to follow, just find some of the experts. I don't know, maybe somebody like Paul that I'm going in. And one of the things on Twitter is it shows you who they follow. That's what I do. I start figuring out, well, who does Paul follow? Who does Mike follow? Who does Larry? And you start going down these lists of all these people and who they follow. And as you start seeing the things that they're retweeting and sending up, you start following those people. And now I have, I'm four or 500 different people. So now that you have that list, I thought when I was putting this together, I would have a handout with these kind of things available. But I, I guess one thing that you can also do is just kind of, like I mentioned, uh, see who I follow, see some of the others, and you can start just click, 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 follow those people as well. Okay. LinkedIn is another good place. Uh, it's not just for your resume or it's not for job searching. There's other things that are on LinkedIn as well that are available for you. Groups. There's LinkedIn groups and it's discussions, it's all kinds of great information about things that are going on. Uh, here's some of the groups that I belong to on LinkedIn. You can kind of see that first one as the most important one to me because it's my local OWASP group. If you're not familiar, we do have an OWASP group here in Rhode Island. OWASP is the Open Web Application Security Project. Our main focus is web application security and I try to have meetings about once a month uh, right here in Providence with somebody to talk about something web application security related. Uh, but in there as well there's all these different uh, topics on uh, in security and people just kind of come in there and ask questions or they link to their research and one of the other things that's valuable to a lot of people is there are also sometimes job searchers saying I'm looking for somebody, a uh, security person in this area uh, who's looking for a job. So LinkedIn can be a great way to, to learn more as well with this, these kinds of things. Here are some of the, uh, here's an example of some of the stuff that's going on. I wish this was clearer. Uh, let's see. Some of the things that, I can't even really read that from down here. Uh, Web Application Security Beginner's Guide. Somebody has a, a link to PDF files of uh, beginner's guides that you might be available. Somebody has why SQL injection is so important. These sorts of things might be information that uh, are things that you might care about. Mike mentioned Facebook. Yeah, not so much. That's great for talking to grandma. <laughs> YouTube. YouTube is also a great place. Uh, if you haven't heard already, all of today's talks are going to be on YouTube or on irongeek.com. And there are two must-have channels. Okay? One of them is the Iron Geek channel because he does conferences all around the country. Uh, exactly the same way that he's doing them here for us. And there's this other person, I don't even know who he is, but he also seems to also consolidate conference videos from all over the world. So those are a couple of the ones that are great to read, uh, to follow, to check out, and get lots of information out of as well. Okay. Don't, don't forget the YouTube channel you help uh, maintain. Is, is there one that's... There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it, you help maintain it. Is it, is it recommended? <laughs> Oh, sorry. There, there is also a Paul.com uh, YouTube channel as well. It's also on Blip. It's also on Ustream. All also great sources for getting information, uh, which the videos for Paul.com are also on the Paul.com.com website. Uh, we try to get them up as quickly as we can after the show. Uh, I thought that this was a, a great example of the kind of information that people are looking for, especially when you're starting out. Adrian and, and Jeremy put together this 12-part web pen testing workshop, and this thing's a few hours long. And it's all just out there, free, available for anybody just to sit there and hit click and start watching it. Webinars. I've gotten to the point now when I get constantly spammed by these vendors, sponsors, inviting me to their webinars. Uh, like Mike also mentioned earlier, Paul and John do webinars for SANS uh, once a month-ish. Yep. Uh, and these are all free. They, if Once you start getting on their mailing list, they're going to constantly send you new ones. And there's no obligation or anything that you have to do with these kind of things. All you have to do is just go and sign up, and at the given time, you have a link, you get to watch a video for about an hour or so of somebody talking. Every so often they might call you on the phone, but that's, I guess, if you gave them the correct phone number. Here are a couple of the webinars that were just kind of coming up this week, and these are the kind of things that might interest you. Uh, defending against broad-based attacks, defending against DDoS, modern web applications. These are, just in the last week, are some of the ones that I pulled out of my calendar. And 
there's a couple every single week, so there's tons of information available for you there as well. Podcasts. I think Paul, you have a podcast. I think so. Okay. He has a few. He does have a few. So, like I said, if I don't include that first one, I'll probably get fired from an internship. Uh, Paul.com Security Weekly, uh, like Mike was also talking about, everybody who's ever been in the security industry has been on Paul's show. Uh, one of the very first things that Paul assigned me to do when I started working with him was to reorganize the wiki. So if you haven't been there already, you can go to paul.com.com slash wiki, and it's organized a couple different ways. We have all the tech segments all listed in there. We have all the interviews. And if you just go through the interviews and read through the names, it's a who's who. And like I think I mentioned one time on the show, if you read through the names of all the, the tech interviews and all the uh, people that have been on it and you're not impressed, there's something wrong with you. Just because everybody's been on it. It's an awesome list. And a lot of times when I'll do demonstrations for people, I'll just pull up the uh, tech segments and I'll say, give me a topic. And somebody will uh, shout out, you know, bypassing AD. And you go down and you say, okay, well, there's the talk on it. There's virtually nothing that hasn't been covered on there that you can probably think of. So if, there's an, if you have an area of interest in security, go to Paul's Wiki and you can watch videos and listen to the podcasts on that kind of stuff. There's also lots of other great ones available. Uh, OWASP has one. Uh, Paul does the, the Tenables <laughs> weekly podcast, social engineering, there's all kinds of great stuff that's available out there for you, all free. Blogs are, are a great place to get information from as well. I'm not too happy that Google Reader is shutting down. Uh, we're going to have to find something else to replace it. Uh, let's see. I have a whole big list of different blogs that I, I just kind of check on. It's nice that you kind of have the, uh, the headlines that you're able to see. Let's see if uh, some more suggestions on ones that you can go to, in addition to Paul.com, uh, where we have the all the shows and different tech segments. And people with the group are also posting their current research. Carlos is constantly on there putting up information about PowerShell. He's coming up with Tim Tomes with different tools that he puts out, as well as lots of others. Okay, Dark Reading is a great one to get information on. Bruce Schneier, one of the smartest people in security, uh, talking on various things as well. Conferences and meetings are an awesome place to learn information. It's a great place to get uh, to do some networking. But most of you have figured out this already because obviously you're here. So that's important to you guys. Uh, some of the other ones that are in the area as well. OWASP. <coughs> Might have mentioned that one before. The Brown Group. Mm -hmm. NISG up in Boston. There's also an OWASP group up in Boston as well. There's local mm -hmm. meetups. There's a security meetup group up in Boston. There's Mass Hackers uh, who had their, their BCOT conference just recently. Uh, some other conferences that are coming up pretty soon, the uh, Boston Application Security Conference, AppSec USA is coming up in New York City uh, this fall. Uh, so conferences are a great way to learn information. I've been completely impressed today with all the different speakers that we've had, and I helped put this thing together. I thought just about every talk that we've had today from some of the people in this room and the other room could have been a keynote in, in themselves. And we just had a whole stack of them. So conferences are a great way to learn information as well. Listservs, uh, Mike mentioned the, the PSW at Paul.com listserv, where people are just on there discussing various uh, things, asking questions. Uh, one of the ones that I'm always impressed with, if you ever see uh, emails from Robin Wood, he's always coming up with some kind of new tool, new scripts, and he puts them out on the, the, the PSW list. It's awesome information that's available to you. Find a list that is an area of interest to you, and subscribe to it, uh, and start reading all of that, and contribute to it, ask questions. People will get back to you about these sorts of things. Uh, if you're into mod security, pen testing, just, just about any kind of list available where you want to learn something. Of course, there's the old way as well. You can get books. Uh, they're not free, they're, they can be free in various, wells, in various places. You can borrow them, share them, uh, but the old dead tree is also another way to inexpensively learn things. Coursera. Has anybody heard of Coursera? <clears throat> I just went on there the other day. There's 21 uh, security courses on there for free. And you can just sign up and take them. Uh, so back at the beginning where we talked about how there's, you can take courses and they can get expensive, well, if you go through this, Coursera.com, it's 
extremely expensive. All right. I guess it wasn't quite 30 minutes ago, but you can also do an internship. Mike just talked about uh, doing that sort of thing uh, for various sources and contact Paul first if that's something that you want to do. Uh, so you basically find someone who's willing to work with you, find someone who's uh, going to make sure that there's going to be a give and take with you. Uh, make sure that you're going to get something out of it in the area that you're interested in and that you, it's somebody that you can work with uh, to give back to them. There might be some various tasks that you're asked to do at times and it's like, well, this, this isn't what I wanted to do. You have to do it anyway. That, that's why you're there because the people that you're going to do an internship with, if it's worth doing it with them, they're extremely busy. They don't have time to listen to somebody complain that they don't want to do that task. Um, but you're going to get so much out of it by working with these people that it's worth more than you can uh, even imagine. Uh, when I first talked, Paul came and spoke for me at the OWASP uh, group back in August, and I told him that one of the things that I've been looking for is just somebody to shadow, somebody to, to sit with, and just to learn from. And he said, well, I have my internship group. And I figured, well, this would be great. I'll be able to work with Paul and see the kinds of things that he does. And I learned thousands of times more than I ever expected to with him. Just sitting there with him, some of the things that he sees, some of the things he's like, here, let's go play with this. Let's go in this other room, into the, the, the rack server room, and start playing with these sorts of things. And, They'll say, well, today I want you to learn about CSERF and come back to me with a presentation on that. And it was, it's amazing the amount of information that comes out of it. And even if it's just so that you have a set amount of time where you're, you're doing nothing but focused on this, and make sure that you can do that. That it's not something that you're trying to do along with your work because it's, you can't be distracted. You have to really be able to focus when you're, you're doing uh, an internship and you're really focused on your tasks. Because as Mike said, when you're given a task, you have to follow through on it and make sure you, you come up. or to do it yourself. Uh, I hear from a lot of people that they just kind of complain that nobody wants to help me. That's your problem. Okay. Uh, it's not up to anybody else if you want to get into the security field to help you. You need to make sure that you make this work for you. Uh, and they all say, well, I don't really know where to start. Start at the very beginning. It depends on what you want to do. Maybe if you want to be into network security, well, create your own, and then go out and try to break it and see where it breaks, kind of throw tools at it. Uh, there are lots of vulnerable applications out there. If you're into web security, set up one of those, and then try to break those. Uh, pull apart hardware, uh, routers, any of these sorts of things. See how they work. See if you can put them back together again. Uh, and as I said, learning is your responsibility. Mike mentioned earlier, I think I heard on the show last week, Andy Ellis, the CSO of Akamai, was also talking about drinking from the fire hose. There's so much information out there in security. That was one of the, the things that I also felt at the beginning. There's just so much information out there. It's all interesting, all the way from wanting to learn about the, the networking, all the way to social engineering, application security, routers. It's just really too much. Find out what you want to do, focus, and become really good at that one area. That, that's going to be uh, going to help you to go a long way and, be the, the go-to person for that area that you really care about. What did I miss? What are some other areas that you might be using to learn in the area of security? Where did I cover absolutely everything that nobody's ever used? Did you mention the local DC 401, the DEF CON group as well? Because that's not just in Rhode Island, right? That's every year. Uh, th there are it, several. Area let, there's lots of uh, DEF CON groups. They usually go by the DC and the area code. We do have a DC 401 group around here. Uh, Dave Johnson is the one who organizes that around. He's been here today. Uh, and they have meetings just about monthly. I think down at ASP20. Uh, ASP20 Labs. ASP20 Labs. Around the corner from the other ASP20. Okay. So yeah, the ASP20 Labs with a DC 401 group can be. Uh, Sort of things, so. All right. Good. Awesome. Well, I thank everybody for coming. This has been a great experience. And uh, I guess when the other meeting group is done, when the other room's done, we're going to have closing ceremonies over next door. I have slides for that. They want everything. Yeah. Paul actually went through the trouble of creating slides, so please stay. <laughs> <laughs>